Thank you. That concludes urgent questions. I'm now moving on to topical questions. Anna Sarwa. Thank you, Presiding Officer, to ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on the response to and the impact of the contamination of water at the cancer ward at the Royal Hospital for Children in Glasgow. Shona Robinson. Presiding officer, I welcome this opportunity to update the Chamber on the work being done by NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde and the incident management team to address this issue. I'm sure all of us, will, our overriding concern will be the well-being of the children and families in the affected areas. I've spoken today with the board's chair and chief executive and they were clear that no patients are giving any cause for concern as a result of bacterial infections associated with this incident. However, the board, with support from Health Protection Scotland, are taking appropriate precautionary measures to ensure that any infection is contained and addressed. Following identification of the bacteria, testing from the water tank supplying both the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital and the Royal Hospital for Children has tested negative. A range of control measures has been put in place, including some taps and shower heads being taken out of use for chemical disinfection and point of use filters are in the process of being installed. Filters are due to be in place by close of play today and sampling will be undertaken to ensure that the water is deemed safe. I've asked uh, Health Protection Scotland to coordinate a thorough investigation as a matter of urgency to review all of these matters and make any recommendations for the NHS going forward and I'm sure that this review is then reported to Parliament. Anna Sarwa. Presenting officer, the news of contamination of the water supply at the cancer ward at the Children's Hospital in Glasgow has caused understandable worry and concern for patients of very sick children. Um, I've spoken directly with parents affected. They are angry distressed and understandably concerned. Parents who tell me they learned more about the problem from a newspaper than in any communication from the health board. They also tell me that this issue has now been running for three weeks, Come on, but has only question. come into the question. public domain in the last few days. There is clearly an issue with transparency, so can the Cabinet Secretary advise when she was first made aware of the issue and what communication she's had prior to today with Greater Glasgow and Clyde Health Board? Can she tell why it took a press inquiry for the health board to go public and why there hasn't been better communication with patients Cabinet and Secretary. Um, so can I say first of all to Anna Sauer, I absolutely understand the worry and concern of parents. I have been assured uh, by the health board that they have indeed been keeping uh, in parents uh, informed, but I'll certainly uh, follow up what Anna Sauer is saying. If uh, he's saying that's not the case, they are saying they have uh, had uh, um, extensive communication with, with parents who would understandably uh, be uh, anxious. Uh, I was uh, first made aware of the issue uh, on the, uh, I think it was the 11th uh, of March. Uh, Scottish Government officials were made aware of the issue uh, prior to that and Health Protection Scotland has been helping uh, with the uh, board in order to address uh, the issues uh, of concern um, that uh, have been highlighted. What I should say is one of the bacteria involved is very, very rare indeed. So this is quite a complex matter in trying to get to the bottom of the issue. The priority has obviously been the welfare and safety of the children and that's why the pr procedures have been taken to uh, make sure that, for example, there's alternative cleaning facilities while the taps and shower heads have been getting the filters fitted. If the water testing is negative uh, after the filters have all been fitted by the end of today, they are hoping to have the water supply back up and running by tomorrow evening, but that is dependent on having a, a negative result from the water testing. Brief supplementary, please. Scotland's flagship hospital, yet parents have spoken about a lack of hot water for nearly three weeks. That has meant the inability of children, cancer patients, to even bathe some being forced to take a taxi to other sites so they can wash. These are cancer no, patients. No, 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 no. You had three questions infection. in your first. With a respect, brief supplementary. With respect, no. Officer, these are issues being raised by concerned parents. Um, that is three weeks without the ability to wash their children. Three weeks. No, Mr. No Sarwar, I said a three supplementary. With, Please give three me the question. Three weeks with no urgent uh, resolution. Will the Cabinet Secretary take this opportunity to investigate this further and to apologise directly to the patients and their parents? Cabinet Secretary. Well, of course, um, I would apologise to the parents for and the children for the inconvenience 
that they have uh, experienced. But I'm sure everybody would understand the most important thing here is safety. And if the shower heads and taps are being tested and investigated, then that has to take its course. These are complex issues and they need to be fully, fully investigated. This bacteria is very, very rare indeed. I can assure Anisara and indeed the parents and children, absolutely everything has been done to uh, get to the bottom of this. And that is why the focus has been now on fitting the filters uh, in those immune compromised wards. Uh, by the end of today, that will have been done. As I said, if the tests are clear and negative, then the water supply will be uh, put back on. And as I've already said in my initial answer, Health Protection Scotland will, of course, be looking into all of these matters. And if there are recommendations that can be made in order to improve the situation going forward, then, of course, that's what will happen. Annie Wills. Thank you, Deputy President Officer. <clears throat> these reports are very worrying, and I welcome the news that none of the children involved are currently giving cause for concern. As the Cabinet Secretary has already stated, that tests have been carried out at the Queen, Queen Elizabeth University Hospital also, where concerns have previously been raised about please, issues raised with contamination of patient question? equipment to the cladding of the building. How will the Cabinet Secretary reassure patients and those living in Glasgow that these hospitals are fit for purpose? Thank you. Well, first of all, I mean, this issue is completely unrelated to the cladding uh, on the building. Uh, these hospitals are state-of-the-art facilities. Um, they are not alone in sometimes having issues with bacterial uh, um, infections breaking out, particularly when they are rare. They are very complex to identify the source of that. And that's why everybody has been putting their shoulders to the wheel in order to get to the bottom of this. And I would hope that all members will support the board and Health Protection Scotland and the incident management team in their efforts to do so. The focus here is on the safety of the children within the hospital. That should be our main priority too. Fulton McGregor, uh, where is he? Thank you, President. And make it a question, Mr McGregor. I'm losing patience. <laughs> Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm that there have been no infections as a result of this incident at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital and ask if NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde have taken full advice in handling this incident from both Health, Health Protection Scotland and Health Facilities Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's been no um, infections of, of adults uh, within the, the, the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Um, the support by Health Protection Scotland and Health Facilities Scotland has um, been there and the board have been working flat out to get to the bottom of this. They have taken uh, urgent action immediately upon realising that uh, this bacterial in infection was present and they have done everything they possibly could to get to the bottom of it as quickly as they could. And they've had the expert advice and support in order to do that. These are complex issues and we should get behind those who are trying to resolve it and support them in their efforts. Thank you. That concludes topical questions. I'll suspend briefly before we... Point of order. Uh, thank you, Deputy President Officer. I wish to raise a point of order in relation to the timetabling of uh, the, the scheduling of the urgent question and the topical question. I think as we've just seen uh, in the, the exchange, it's a very serious matter raised by Anas Sarwa. I don't, I don't think members were allowed to give proper development to the urgency of the issue uh, because, it, because of the restriction, because of the Mr the Kelly, question thank you. As you know, that's a matter for the business managers. And in, in relation to both topics, or both very serious topics, Mr. Sarwar, in fact, answered, gave three questions in his first one, which was not, I didn't mind at all. Please sit down just now. It is not a point of order. The, the timetabling of the business for today was set by the business managers. We have to start stage three. I've given a little extra time. You know yourself the timetabling for stage three, which must go ahead. So please sit down. That deals with the matter.